Hey guys, I have here the 990 Pro. This SSD can do up to 7450 megabytes per second. I'm going to use this SSD as an external hard drive and this one is 4 terabyte. This is one that I need because I have only 2 terabyte SSDs and the previous one that I have is the 980 Pro. So the look of the 990 Pro is very similar. It is almost the same as the 980 Pro. The 990 Pro is slightly faster than the 980 Pro and most importantly you cannot get a 4 terabyte with the 980 pro you're going to absolutely love this ssd in your ps5 because this is four extra terabyte that you can use and this is one of the best ssds that you can get on the market you can use this ssd for a lot of application but for me i'm going to use it as an external hard drive and this was my first external enclosure that i got this one is from sebrand the one that i'm opening currently is a thunderbolt 3 enclosure and this one has the most speed that i need and i'm going to remove the 980 pro that is installed on that one the white stuff that you're seeing is the thermal paste this help with heat dissipation i'm going to remove the thermal paste at first and after that there is one screw that hold the 980 pro on the board and after removing that i can simply lift the 980 pro remove it and start the installation of the 990 pro inside this enclosure the ssd is inserted at an angle of 45 degrees you press on it and after that you install the screw that held the ssd on the board install the new thermal paste the old thermal paste that you have on top of the ssd and you close the enclosure basically if you get any enclosure this is going to be the steps that you need to take in order to install the ssd inside the enclosure after putting all the screws back in place you can start using your enclosure this one is not thunderbolt 3 but usb 3.1 the speeds are always below 800 megabyte per second for reading and writing I needed one enclosure to have as much memory as possible instead of carrying multiple enclosures having a total memory of 4 terabyte a little bit more as you can see the 990 pro 4 terabyte is consistently getting above 2700 megabyte per second for writing and reading so how does the 990 pro 4 terabyte compare to the 980 pro 2 terabyte currently i'm testing the speed of the 980 pro for the reading speed i was getting close to 2600 megabyte per second a little bit over 2600 i did the test multiple times in order to see if i will get something lower or something higher but you can see it is very consistent if you get this enclosure with the samsung 980 pro you can be reassured that your setup with this ssd and enclosure is going to provide you consistent speeds and be overall reliable so this is the usb-c that came with the sandisk extreme portable ssd i'm going to test that usb-c with this new enclosure and see what kind of speeds i get by using this inferior usb-c cable i'm getting 1800 i have lost close to 1000 megabyte per second on reading and writing this test was simply to show that the usb-c cable is very important to achieve the higher speeds and in order to achieve these speeds you need to have your ssd formatted into apfs apfs is the preferred format that is going to give you the maximum speed if you're using a macbook pro or a macbook air or any other mac os device one thing to know about apfs is that it works only with mac os and if you plug this enclosure onto a windows pc or any other operating system System, it is not going to be recognized the first time that i plugged the enclosure with the 980 pro the macbook pro that i am using didn't recognize it it simply says that the disk that you attach was not readable by this computer to start using the ssd you need to initialize it first by initialize you simply need to format the ssd into the preferred ssd format that you need and after that you can have access to your ssd currently i'm in disk utility and you can see we have sebrant media this is the enclosure at the moment the format says uninitialized also the only thing that we can see at this moment is the two terabyte memory that is exact and we need to start the formatting of the ssd i clicked on erase at the top right of the disk utility and after that i inserted a name for my new ssd and i chose the format apfs with a macbook pro mac os you're going to have the best speed the most speed with apfs format formatting the 980 pro is very fast and it is already done after the formatting has been completed and the device is ready to be used i'm going to start speed 
testing this device in order to see what kind of speed I'm getting with my M1 MacBook Pro. The Samsung 980 Pro is one of the best SSD that you can get and be one of the most reliable SSD that you can get. For the speed test on my new SSD, I'm going to use disk speed test. I simply need to go inside the new SSD and select it as the target disk. Let me know in the comment box what type of speed I might be getting with this new SSD and let's start the test and see what I'm getting. For the initial test, the writing speed goes up to 975 megabyte per second. On the reading speed, I'm getting 892 megabyte per second. These results are not very close to the one advertised by the 980 Pro. The speed that I'm getting for writing and reading are already much more higher than the one that I was getting with the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I did the speed test multiple times to see if I can get something different, but it is very consistent. I'm getting 975 on writing and 890 on reading every single runs that I did for this test. I am very satisfied with the speed that I'm getting, but I'm going to format the SSD once again into a different format in order to see what kind of speed I'm getting with XFAT. In order to format again from APFS into another format, you need to delete the APFS volume and after that you can erase the disk and format it into a different format. So the main difference between XFAT and APFS is that XFAT can be used in any other operating system. It can be used in a MacBook and also in a Windows PC. Generally, XFAT is for everybody, but APFS is only for MacBook, which means that if you have APFS, you cannot access your disk using a Windows PC, Linux, and any other operating system. I'm ready to do the test with the XFAT format and see what kind of speed I'm getting. So on the first run, I'm getting 629 as writing speed while using the XFAT format, and compared to the APFS, it was 975. For the reading speed it is not good it is extremely bad i'm getting around 166 megabyte per second which means that if i'm using the 980 pro as xfat for video editing it might not work very well the xfat format is very good if you're using multiple operating system but as you can see it on a macbook pro and using this enclosure especially i'm not getting anything and the reading speed is extremely bad again i did the same thing i let the device run the test multiple times in order to see if I can get something different but I'm still getting the same numbers. The reading speed is very bad and the writing speed is decent. The APFS format works so well on MacBook because the internal SSD on a MacBook is formatted to be APFS. Since my M1 MacBook Pro cannot give me 7000 and 5000 megabytes per second as write and read speed, I'm going to go back into APFS and continue with 975 and 890. The internal SSD on this M1 MacBook Pro, if I do the same test, can give me 5000 read and 5000 write. As soon as I formatted back into APFS and did another speed test, I'm getting again the same type of speed as earlier. Currently, I'm getting 973 and 887 megabytes per second for writing and reading. The enclosure that I'm using is USB 3.2, 10 gigabyte per second, USB Type-C. The enclosure is a little bit warm after I did all this test and in order to get much higher speeds, you need an enclosure that can go up to 40 gigabytes per second, Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. If you have a laptop or a computer that can take this 980 Pro directly on the internals, you can do it and it is going to deliver much higher speeds and similar to the advertised speed as Samsung said.